Hey the people, how you doing? So, it is time to do the camera comparison between the iPhone 13 Pro and the S21 Ultra. And if you really think about it, these two are essentially the rivals. You know, they cost almost the same. Actually, the iPhone 13 Pro cost a lot more in India, but that's a different issue. But other than that, you know, these cameras, well, they are quite different if you really think about it, because we have a 108 megapixel sensor and then ultra wides are quite similar but then we have a lot more zoom on the s21 ultra now how all of this is going to affect photography well that is exactly what we have to find out so let's get started so for this shot right here well i'd say this is one of the bigger differences you're going to see in this comparison because the s21 ultra is not just producing a very good image with really nice dynamic range but it's actually producing a more natural looking image because that's how it looked to my eyes it was not as crushed as the iphone 13 here now this tendency, you're gonna see this happen a lot in various situations and basically this camera comparison it entails not just how good these cameras can be, but it also really showcases the differences in the processing algorithms that both of these possess. Now for this ultra wide shot, contrary to before, you know both have really nice dynamic range, the contrast is really well balanced, but uh, ironically the white balance on either of these is not. Because I'd say that the accurate white balance would be something uh, sort of in between leaning more towards the S21 Ultra because the iPhone just looks excessively warm. You can see the excessive warmth not just in the road but also in the leaves in the background there. So I think if I had to pick one I might as well go with the S21. Now for this shot right here, both are sort of blowing out highlights but the iPhone is blowing out more of them. Now, I'm actually also gonna have to mention the fact that we have really weird purple clouds on both of them, which is kind of unexpected to see. Like, usually one of them messes up the tint or something like that, but for both of them to do that, it's kind of weird to be honest. But anyways, so basically the iPhone here is trying to give us this sense of high contrast in the image by essentially lifting up the specular highlights to look really bright, like almost pure white, while the S21 is not doing that. Now upon doing so, I think the iPhone is actually making the image look a little weird. At least in this case, there are places where it really works well and it looks quite nice, but definitely not always like you see here. But for this, almost like a close-up shot, well I'd say now I think the iPhone is pulling ahead with colors because the overall color accuracy is quite a bit better on the iPhone this time around. The purple in the clouds is still present on both, although a little bit more saturated on the S21 Ultra, but in general I prefer the iPhone's colors here. Everything else, as you'd expect, is just the same. Now this ultra wide shot, well this is quite interesting. I had genuinely expected either of these phones to like drastically either crush all the shadows or completely blow out all the highlights, but neither of them did. They completely blew my expectations away and produced almost identically amazing images like these are very good now three times zoom well this is kind of interesting because although both of these phones have 3x zoom the quality of the sensor and the general quality of images that you can get is actually better on the iphone because the moment we crop in you'll notice that the amount of details we can get without actually over sharpening the image too much is actually much higher on the iphone like there's a good bit of artifacting and processing present on the S21 Ultra, at the zoom level at least. Again, not a huge difference, but definitely nice to see that the iPhone sensor is actually better, especially because it's the only zoom it has. Speaking of which, however, 10 times zoom is essentially the place where the S21 takes a lead and there are very few, if any, phones out there that can really compete against the S21 Ultra's very powerful zoom. I do want to say that the S21 is looking a bit washed out. It doesn't always happen, but I have noticed it happening sometimes, so do keep that in mind. The iPhone's contrast is good, but like the details are just not there. Now, 108 megapixels, I mean, we have to show off the details that the S21 Ultra tells so proudly. But what's even more interesting in this shot in particular is that the iPhone changed the color of the pavement to gray for some odd reason. I mean, I distinctly remember that being brown just like the S21 Ultra, so I'm not sure why the iPhone even changed it. Like, how, how did that even happen? I have no idea. But anyways, let's zoom in. And I think we all knew what was going to happen. Obviously, the S21 is going to be the one with drastically less over sharpening and at that actually managing to pull out even more detail. I mean, it's nine times the resolution. <laughs> that should most definitely be the case at this point. All right, now I did take a few backlit shots, but to my surprise, like there is minimal difference 
Like I remember last year taking these shots with the iPhone 12 and it struggled quite hard. But seems like the iPhone 13 Pro's much more mature processing can really handle it well and both are quite nice in these situations so essentially you're gonna get great images no matter the lighting. But on the ultra wide I did notice something other than the fact that the brightness is high on the S21 while lower on the iPhone is that when we punched in we can actually see a lot more noise and grain on the iPhone especially on the subject. Now that said, there is more overall detail present on the iPhone as well. I just thought it was interesting to point out because there are going to be a lot more ultra wide shots where the iPhone is actually going to falter. So, you know, this is one of the areas where it actually did quite a good job. Another area where the ultra wide on the iPhone does a phenomenal job is with macro mode. That's not to say the S21 is bad or anything, but the iPhone constantly just gives you a sharper and a closer result, as in you can get closer to the subject. And that's actually quite impressive because the S21 so far in 2021, like excluding some microscopic cameras, has been the one that could get like the closest to any subject for macro shots. All right, so for portraits, I think this is gonna be the most interesting area in the comparison. Essentially, up until the iPhone 13 Pro, I'd actually considered the S21 Ultra to be my go-to camera for portraits, selfies, whatever have you. And well, I think now it has officially changed because just look at that color accuracy like everything else is essentially the same it's both of like amazing edge detection they have really nice hdr but the colors that alone is enough to shift me towards the iphone for human subjects and it actually carries over to zoomed in portraits as well you can see my gray shirt actually looks gray on the iPhone compared to this weird bluish gray on the S21 Ultra. Now, if you just use the S21 Ultra's image as a standalone one, no one would actually notice a difference, but side by side, it is very, very obvious. And to top it all off, the iPhone also has slightly better detail thanks to its slightly higher quality 3x zoom camera. Now, of course, I didn't just stop there. I wanted to see exactly how good the edge detection on the new iPhones were because they had definitely improved. And so I took this shot. This is a very difficult shot. Like, I'm pretty sure anyone could appreciate the fact. But I'm genuinely surprised just how perfect both of these phones are here. I, I do want to say that the bokeh balls look better on the iPhone, but that's a small thing. The edge detection and just the beautiful gradual blur that you get, it looks so natural and like, it, you'll be hard pressed to really think if this was actually a portrait shot or not. Now this, I would say arguably is an even more difficult shot because there's a reflection which, as you can see, neither of them are quite getting it right. And of course there's a glass edges, which is pretty similar on both. But I think the big difference here is that the S21 Ultra is underexposing and it is just not giving the bokeh balls their proper justice there. The iPhone is definitely doing a better job here. And now finally for the most difficult portrait shot, and I'm pretty sure no one's actually going to use portrait mode for a shot like this because you don't really need it. But you know, for technical purposes, I think this is a very good test and it shows that the iPhone, although it has some discrepancies, the S21 detection is slightly better. The S21 has a lot more defects if you really think about it. Now for selfies, well, here I'd say that the S21 Ultra actually has a really good selfie camera and as you can see the color accuracy is also a lot better compared to the portraits that we had earlier. So in general, selfies, selfie portraits and so on, they are gonna be a lot better compared to normal portraits on the S21 Ultra. At least that's the case in this comparison. Although I still kinda like the colors on the iPhone, but do keep in mind that in this selfie, the iPhone is just a little bit warmer than it naturally was. Now this selfie portrait right here, I think this kind of demonstrates the major differences between the two, just the approaches they take, because there are two major differences here. Essentially, if you look at the gradual blur from the S21 Ultra, because just look at those leaves, the ones in the foreground have less blur compared to the ones in the background, and it looks so very natural. This is a selfie camera portrait that we are talking about. That is wild. But then we have the iPhone, which doesn't have that gradual blur, but it does manage to give us a brighter and also a higher contrast image by once again lifting the specular highlights. This is one of those areas where lifting specular highlights actually makes the image look good. Now for a final selfie portrait, well, this is a very difficult situation of course, and this is one of those areas once again where lifting those highlights and just focusing on the subject alone can help the iPhone out a lot. Because on the S21 Ultra, in an effort to keep everything balanced, yes, it is, you know, representing the background properly. You know, you can see the clouds compared to nothing on the iPhone. But 
it is kind of making the subject look bad because now I somehow have brownish blue hair and my t-shirt looks all wrong with colors. Skin tones are slightly off but in general if you want good portraits I, I still think the iPhone takes it. You know, in general it is consistently better with maintaining proper focus on the subject in terms of colors and contrast and all that. But when we go to low light it's the S21's game, like there is nothing else that really comes close here. Just take a look at the difference, I mean do I really have to say anything? That noise on the iPhone is just, it's pretty much unbearable. And by the way, to make things worse for the iPhone, we actually get selfie portrait night mode. Just look at the difference there. This was a 4 second exposure and my hands weren't really all that still, yet we get such a beautifully sharp result. The iPhone of course doesn't have night mode so you know it kind of nullifies itself there. Now night mode portraits is kind of interesting so the iPhone tends to be very finicky with like lighting because of the fact that this is sort of backlit it wouldn't take a portrait shot like it just kept saying that there's not enough light but then how did the S21 Ultra manage that? I don't know maybe it just somehow managed to see more or something like that but in general I found that the S21 Ultra can take consistent portraits in low light although the quality of night mode portraits as you see in this one here is actually better compared to the S21 Ultra because we get better detail, we get less noise and we don't get that weird green that seeps in on the S21 Ultra ever so often on the main camera. It only happens in night mode and it just looks weird to be honest. And edge detection is also better on the iPhone here. I think the only problem here is that the warmth that you see on the S21 Ultra is the accurate color like there was a warm light while on the iPhone it's completely gone. It is trying a bit too hard to balance it to like remove the mood that I was trying to set. But now let us move on to normal night mode shots because I would say up until now essentially I prefer the S21 Ultra for normal photography and when it comes to human subjects in general I think the iPhone takes a lead. Night mode however is kind of interesting so essentially what happens is the iPhone really likes to darken certain images which have bright highlights in the foreground. That's exactly what's happening here and it doesn't look all that nice. Now to add to that, the S21 also brings in more sharpness. Now this shot is kind of interesting because here although the shadows aren't being crushed by the iPhone which is kind of nice to see but it also has a lot of smudging going on in a lot of the leaves and there is this pretty crazy warm cast going on. You can see it quite well in the sky. Now for this 3x zoom shot, well contrary to previous shots, now the iPhone is completely removing the warmth which was naturally present. Now that is kind of weird if you ask me because yes it is more accurate on the S21 Ultra and in general I think this white balance issue it might be fixed with software update. I'm not really sure if that's really gonna happen but I'll be on the lookout for it. But I do believe that when we crop in by quite a bit we do get slightly high detail on the iPhone. It's just ever so slightly high but definitely something you should keep in mind. But I guess we can also say that for 10 times zoomed in night modes on the S21 Ultra. Like this shot was surprisingly easy to take considering we have zoomed in 10 times and I took like a 3 second exposure. Usually you'd get a completely smeared up mess and many smartphones have seen that happen but on the S21 Ultra it is very very high quality as you can see. The iPhone of course doesn't exactly stand a chance with detail and it is once again removing all of that warmth from the image. Alright now ultra wide night mode I think this is where the iPhone really lacks in overall quality. Like yeah, normal ultra wide shots were pretty good but ultra wide night mode in particular has not improved enough compared to last year to really compete against like the S21 Ultra. And there are many other phones that can actually do ultra wide night mode better than the S21 Ultra so like it's just bad news for the iPhone 13 Pro here. Now for a backlit shot, well I do want to say that this is very low light and neither of these images are really portraying just how insanely dark it was. And that light in the background, it is not nearly as bright, especially when you look at the iPhone's image. You might think that it's this very bright highlight but that's not really the case. And so in general obviously I prefer the uh, S21 here, it's just doing such a better job at balancing the entire image over. Now ultra low light with ultra wide. I think it's pretty obvious, the iPhone is the one which has a darker, noisier and less detailed result so it's, it's pretty obvious that the S21 is taking a win here. Now moving on to our final shot of the day. This is ultra low light with the main cameras. Essentially I think here the fact that the iPhone is crushing the shadows 
is actually helping it out. Because on the S21, we get a lot more noise and artifacting and it really doesn't help that we once again get that weird green seeping in from the bottom of the image. I'm not really sure why that happens and it happens only in night mode for us, I remember I've seen this before as well and I've complained about it probably. But in general, this is a weird issue on the S21 and I do hope that we can get it fixed in like the next generation. So for this image, the iPhone does take a win. Alright, that was it. Man, a long long comparison I gotta say. But I think it's pretty clear that in general, unless it's like this crazy ultra low light situation where the iPhone did take a lead and the S21 just had this weird green thing coming up. Yes, I do, I do prefer the S21 Ultra. And technically speaking, I mean night mode also includes selfie night mode, selfie portrait night mode and night mode portrait on the S21 Ultra. So in general, I do prefer the S21 for night mode shots because it just produces better results. And I know you might be wondering if I actually used the full exposure of the iPhones I did bump it up to match the S21 Ultra and sometimes like in the lower light situations I actually pulled it ahead to give it like a 6 or 7 second exposure but I mean the iPhone didn't really do a particularly great job in most of the cases especially with the ultra wide camera you know. I had really hoped that with the new sensors and everything they would improve night mode but that's the major area where they needed an improvement but Apple didn't really do much about it. It has gotten better to the point that it produces usable images in low light but it's still not close to its competition. With that said, I'd say that the S21 Ultra is more for normal photography now and portraits and selfies it's good but you won't get the most accurate results. If you really want those and that's genuinely what you're really looking for as a photographer then definitely the iPhone is the right way to go. So with that said, I do hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, do hit that like button, subscribe if you aren't ready, and I will be seeing you guys later. Cheers.